problem. God can glorify himself. Even in those questions that you don't have answers. Mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surround his people. God is around his people. So welcome to church. If you have your Bible, turn with in Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Somebody said, the Christian life is not a playground, but a battleground. Christian life is not a playground, but a battleground. And uh, the topic of my message, my message today is fight for your family. Say my fight for your family. And maybe some of us, God is say, telling them, fight for your life. I was looking at the word definition of fight. Mean to, to struggle to overcome. Eliminate or prevent. And then in the same, a violent confrontation or a struggle. So when you're saying you fight for your family, you fight for your life, there is a confrontation. And you can either win or lose. And when we are fighting in our Christian life, our ultimate aim is to defeat the enemy, to subdue the enemy, and to destroy the enemy. God is saying, fight for your family. Fight for your life. Fight for your nation. Fight for your church. Praise the name of the Lord. And I've got three points I believe as I go through God will be able to minister to us. Uh, are you there in uh, Nehemiah? Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6. If you are there, say amen. I, I was trying to put myself in Nehemiah's shoe. Uh, just imagine you have heard that your city is in ruin. Uh, it's burned down. The, uh, the, 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 the walls are destroyed. And uh, the city is open. Uh, it's destroyed. And up from that, after starting to rebuild the walls, your, your mission was to rebuild a wall. Then you are encountering opposition. People who are even threatening to kill your life. And I can imagine it was a very, very difficult moment for Nehemiah. And I believe some of us, those who are watching us overline, those who are here live, that every one of us are going through a struggle. There is challenges. And if you don't overcome it, it will overcome you. And I believe God is asking us. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violence shall take it by force. I say the violence shall take it by force. And I believe that our families will stand. Our families will stand. Praise the name of the Lord. Fight for your family. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, So we rebuild the wall till of all of it reach half its height. They were halfway on the project. For the people work with their hearts. Some versions say, For the people had a heart to work. And when Sudden Balad, Tobiah, and the Arabs, the Ammonites, and men of Ashdod heard that the repairs to the Jerusalem walls had gone ahead and gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They were almost half, they, halfway. And when, when this was happening, it's amazing what, how the enemy worked. Is raising people, they are not happy about what is happening, and they are threatening to destroy the work, not only the work, but also the people that were working there. 
And in verse 8, the Bible says, They plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But I thank God because the Bible says, But we prayed to God and posted a guard day and night to meet their threat. We prayed to God. We called on the name of the Lord and posted a guard. Amen. And by the way, there is the, the part of God, but also there is under the human responsibility. As God fight for you, you need to post a guard. You put, need to put a full armor of God. They say day and night, they posted a guard. And in verse 10, meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. They are wearing out. They are, they are getting tired. And there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Think of it. They were external forces. The Sanballat, the Tobias, and the Arabites, and the Anites, all those, those outside there, they were fighting. But apart from that, there was also the inner enemies. Because people were wearing out. People were getting discouraged. People were almost losing hope. The work was overwhelming. But I like what the Bible says. Our, the Bible says that also our enemies said, before they know it or see it, we'll be right there among them and kill them and put an end to the work or their family. Then the Jews who live near, near them came and told us ten times. Can you imagine being told of negative report? Whatever you are doing, it's not going to work. Whatever you are doing, we are going to destroy. People are coming out to kill you. Wherever they turn, they say they will attack us. And then verse 13, I like Nehemiah. He's a strategic leader. He's a bold leader. He did not give up. He did not even complain and sent a message to the king. He did not even replied them. What he did, he prepared himself. Then in verse 13 he says, Therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points, those areas that we are vulnerable, at the exposed places, positioning them families with sword and spears and bows. bows. And after, after I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles and the official and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your homes. Fight for your life. Remember the Lord God who is great and awesome. Father, as we hear your word, we pray that you minister to us. You are for us. And I'm praying for these men and women, young people. Some of them are going through very difficult moments. They are external and internal struggles. And they are almost giving up. But we are praying that God you'll be able to minister to every one of us as we come out of this place. We'll come out strengthen, challenge, and encourage. We bless you and we honor you. In Christ's name. Hallelujah. Point number one, everyone must take a personal responsibility. Unless you take a personal responsibility, you will not fight. It's not their battle, it's your battle. It's not their family, it's your family. It's not their life, it's your life. And by the end of the day, you must overcome. You have got zero option. As we fight, we must overcome. We cannot afford to lose our families. We cannot afford to lose our faith. And Paul, when he came to the end of his life, he said, I have fought a good fight. Not only fighting, but he's saying, I have fought a good fight and I have kept my faith and I have finished the race. 
May that be said of you. May you say of that when you come to the end of your life and say, I have fought a good fight. I have kept imani ni meilinda. Na muendo ni memalizia. Na umalizia vizuri. Na umaliziwe na shandwe na teremo. Buwana yesu asifiwe sana. And let's remember every decision you make. Every behavior you do. Every thought you think. Everything you do. It affects your life and other people's life. I am responsible. If my family is going to stand, I must stand. I say if our church is going to stand, we must stand. I have a God a Lord to pray. And one of the weapons that the enemy put in our life is the spirit of discouragement. Sometimes we get weary. It's like my life does not count. Whatever I'm doing, it does not count. But I'm saying you are responsible. You can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference in this church. And they say they posted a guard. Day and night. May that be said of you, for your family, you, that you will not lose your family, that you post a guard for your family. Oh, mama, fight for your families. Fight for your children. Men, fight for your families. Children, fight for your parents. And stand up and be counted. I say stand out and be counted wherever you are. So I'm saying, I am responsible. If anything goes bad, I am responsible. And number two, we must have a clear goal and mission for our life. What is it that we want about our life? What is it that we want about our family? What is your driving force for your family? We are not just here for existence. We are here to make a difference. I say we are here to make a difference. Did I give you an example? Of a man went to visit a construction site. And he asked the first person, what are you doing? And he said, I am just laying some stone on top of stones. Another said, I'm just building a four four wall house and I like the way the third one said I am building a great cathedral for God I say I am building a great family for God I am building a great life for God I am raising up a great gi giants for God family where, where women and men wherever you are God has given us a divine mission and we must work very hard to ensure that the purposes of God are done in our lives. And may you have a vision for your family. May you have a goals for your family. May we have values for our family. May we have a passion for our families. That we'll be able to see 10 years or 20 years from now where we want our family to be. People who love God. People who love other people. People who are doing the work of redemption. You remember our mission statement? I just that. Love God. Love God's people. And doing the work. We have a purpose. I say young men, you have a purpose. You are not here by accident. God has a purpose. Let your life be felt. Let you make a difference wherever you are. Pahali wa mama mko mfanya mabadiliko. We must have a clear goal for our families. We must have a clear goal for our nation. We must have a clear goal for our church. I'm raising a great family. I am building a great cathedral for God. I am building a great men and women of God. When you see those children, what do you see? I say when you see those children, what do you see? And I'm seeing giant in making. People will make a difference in our nation. People will raise up the kingdom and standard of this nation. Amid is the corruption and many challenges in our nation. God is raising an army. I say God is raising an army. 
among our children. And the young people, we have got faith in you. We have got confidence in you. You could be going through challenges, but God will see you through, and you will overcome. He who began a good work in our life will be faithful to complete it. And then number three, we must fight for our families. And under this, there are a few points, like five points I want to pinpoint. If you have to fight for your family, you must stay in the ring. I don't know those people who love watching boxing. Eh? Even the, when, the, when they're going get stuff. And there is a lot of blows that you are being hit from east from west. Stay there. Hallelujah. Do not run away. I am not running away. I am here. Ata ukipigwa knockdown. It's not a knockout. Si anahesabu one, two, three, atisa unapaya nini? Fight for your family. Be there. Hallelujah. Even when the going gets tough. When, when you are at your most vulnerable place, don't give up. I like what, say, uh, what Son Chachi said. One day he was invited in a graduation ceremony. Can you imagine the president invited in Nairobi University? And people were very eager to hear his speech. And he stood up and he said, never, never give up. And then he repeated the same statement, never, never give up. And at that time he said, never, never, and then he sat down. And that's what I want to tell you. Never, never give up. Even when the goings get tough. Even when you cannot see light at the end of the tunnel. I say never, 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 never give up. Stay put. He's saying do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord your God who is great and awesome. And when Paul is writing to the Ephesians, he's saying we wrestle not against, we wrestle not against blood and flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, wicked forces in the heavenly force. And he's saying, having done all, stand. Hallelujah. Having done all, hallelujah. Having done all, after all is said and done, stand. And I want to encourage somebody here. You came in this service very discouraged. But God saying, even when you are not able to do anything, stand. When you are down there, you stand. When you are not even able to fight, when you feel as if your strength is gone, stand. And then put on the full armor of God. We are not just there. The Bible says we put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. Arm yourself for battle. Hallelujah. I say you are in a battle and you must overcome. I say you must overcome. Put on the full armor of God. Everyone has his own or her own battle to fight. Some of them need battle of mind. Some of them need battle of watu. Battle what is happening in your life. But I'm saying, having done all, put on the full armor of God. You know, when we go to heaven, God will not say, well done, good and faithful servant, if you, you, if you never worked, if you never fought, if you never won, God will say, well done, good and faithful servant for people who have won the battle. Things will not just happen. You must make things happen. Are we together? Put on the full armor of God. When you go to your working place, maneno amba utasikia, vitu amba utasikia watu wakisema, they will discourage you. But I'm saying, put on the full armor of God and remember it's God who has called you. And you are not alone, you are together with God. You must put on the full armor of God. Hallelujah. Number two, number three, 
identify and close the gaps. And I said, Malitembea, every gap that was there on the wall, he was closing the gap. Any gap in your life, any vulnerable place in your life, close the gap. I identify the weakest link. Where your weakest link is and put the gap. You know where your gap is. Maybe it's in your mind. Maybe it's in the issue of anger. This week, I was driving and as I was driving, somebody all of a sudden came up from nowhere and kaingia kwa barabara. Nikahut. Na hale manenu waliniambia. No, people have got issues. Some people are like, uh, you know, have you seen balloons? Onagoja tu waguze kidogo wa bus. People have got issues. And I was telling myself, what, what wrong did I do? People have got issues of anger. This man was so angry with me. And he said all kind of words. And some of us, you know what? When you know you get a kwa 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 letter chin, ni kukos tu mwe angry tu kidogo tu. And some of you burn doors. Some of you leave this church because somebody made you angry. Eh? Haven't you seen people who have left their marriage because of anger? The Bible says, "In your anger, do not sin." And do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. In a same in your anger. And don't let your anger go until your sunset. Uh-uh. And I say, resolve your issues. The issues of anger. I, I was looking at a picture. I don't know whether I need the picture is there of a person who was very, very angry. Because I've realized anger can can turn into a range. Is, is it there? Okay. So I'm saying we, we must deal with the issue of anger. Because if you're not very careful, uh, do you see that guy? Somebody provoked him and he was ready to do? Ready, ready to fight. Somebody said when we are angry, we are temporarily mad. Wakati unakuwa na hasira, ujua na umekuwa muenda? Wee ni muenda? You, you can do things. Wanasemanga hasira. And it's very important for us. He's saying when you do that, you are giving the devil a foothold. And a butter, a foothold. And somebody said when he has a foothold, he turn it into a stronghold. When you allow him to have a foothold in your life, it becomes a foothold. And I've met some people that have, I did not know what I did, but I went to greet them and they refused to greet me. They were angry with the pastor. And I don't know what, you're angry with me, but I don't know even what I have done. Anger. God against anger. God the anger will destroy you before it destroy other people. I don't know whether you know that. Eh? You are angry, you're angry. You're angry with me. Even I don't know what you're angry with me for. Na unakosa kulala, na unakosa appetite. Na reithi, unakosa appetite. You make asirika na? Na mama Mary. Wana zi zan, wana rusha miko? Wabi wana se, ma ata uki kasirika, ukienda jioni muambia mungu faya nini? Hallelujah. Forgive them. Hallelujah. I say learn to forgive and put forgiveness close to your heart. I'm saying you seal your gaps. Anger can be a gap. Because wherever there is a gap, the enemy will find a place. I say wherever there is a gap, the enemy will find a place. Seal the gaps. Maybe ni the friendship and that are not right. Seal the gap. Maybe in weakness, moral issue. Seal the gap. If you don't destroy it, it will destroy you. I say if you don't destroy it, it will destroy you. Unakumbuka mungu waliambia soul, 
destroy all the Amalekites. And you remember, it's very interesting when you go to 2 Samuel. The person who killed Saul, although Saul wanted to kill himself, he was an Amalekite. If you don't destroy what God is telling you to destroy, one day it's going to destroy you. Na usifanya moyo wako kuwa mgumu. Wewe unajua shida yako. Unajua pahali kuna gap. Close in the gap. Tell your neighbor, close in the gap. Identify your problem and deal with it. If you don't destroy it, destroy you. So I think in temptation, somebody said, I was looking at the issue of temptation. There, there are three things about temptation. When you face temptation, you can pray about it. So maybe when I say, pray that you'll not fall in. Number two, you can overcome it. Temptation mekuja in overcome. Number three, you can flee from it. Torokea. Unajua kuna majaribu wengine unatorokea. Dio baibu inatuambia. Especially you inatuambia flee from sexual lust. You unatorokea tu. Hakuna negotiation. And you don't pray even for it. If there is any attachment, just cut it. Sema just cut it. Ingina tu unatorokea tu. Na wanasema waoga warirudia. Waoga warirudia nani? Si baba yao. Na kuna temptations ingine, God will fight for you. I say there are some temptation, God will fight for you. Na nakuambia, this is not your battle. Kuna wambia, ingina na wasema, this is my, this battle is not your battle. When it's overwhelming beyond your control, God is still in charge and God will fight for you. One is fear sana. So identify your gaps and seal them. Say must seal them. Then number that's number. Number four. Number four. Pray. For your family. Prayer is a powerful weapon. God hears prayers and God answers prayer. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Umezungumze na huyo mtu, umejaribu all that you are able to do, but pray for it. Hallelujah. Prayer works. Prayer changes people. Prayer changes situation. The power of a righteous man, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. God hears prayer. The Bible says the ears of the Lord are attentive to their heart cry. Mungu hujibu maombi. Anajibu maombi. Mungu anatumia maombi kujenga kanisa. Mungu anatumia maombi kujenga jamii. A, a, a family that prays Stays, and I'm not saying about Maombi a grace. Come on. Prayer. Fervent prayer. Praying for your children. Praying for your spouse. Praying for your mother and mother. Praying for our church. Praying for your pastor. And I was telling myself, if prayer, if prayer is so important, well, how much time do we give to prayer? Moja kauliza Ni wangapi wakisahau simu wanarudia nyumbani Kama ulikuwa kwa matatu Omo sande percent Nakauliza ni wangapi waki, wakikumbuka wakuomba wanarudi nyumbani Prayer And if we don't learn it from Jesus we'll never learn He early in the morning he went to pray Na mi ni megundua siri. Na tuta ngengana na nyinyi. Buona zwe sana. Na sita ngengana na nini. I will pray for you. Hallelujah. There is power in prayer. I will pray for you. Pray for them. Pray and fast and things will happen. And you can take this to the bank. God hears prayers. Fervent prayer. Persistent prayer. 
ombea jamii yako ombea nchi yako ombea viongozi wako ongea kanisa yako ombea mama wako ombea huyo mtu Ume, umeongea na mpaka ukachoka lakini usichoke kuomba nasema usichoke kuomba Bwana atakumbuka and God will change Hallelujah I believe in prayer And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 he says God is able to make all grace when you pray God is able to make all grace abound to your family so that at all things and at all times having all that you need that you may abound in every good work omba pastor Moses omba na si ya kuguza guza bwana vizana pray until you feel you have prayed and i would want i would pray that this church will be known as people who praise people who seek god people who post a guard day and night na wengine wenyu mungu atawaamsha mpaka usiku god will give you a burden to pray for pray for people pray for your pastor pray for your family because there is nothing there is nothing sad like losing your family nothing sad like losing your children cover them with prayer what a weapon what a privilege that we have that everything to god in nasema everything financial challenges relationship challenges god has given us an act, direct access na utaji kwenda kwa father direct na kama unaweza enda state house direct mbona una unafuata chief unafuata do na this commissioner ah uh-uh. direct hallelujah we have got a direct line he hears our prayer the bible says the spirit bear witness with our spirit and we call him abba father he hears he knows he cares for us god answers prayer as God we pray and pray to God may God bring healing in your family may God bring healing in your family may God be healing in your relationship may God be healing healing in our children some of us don't know what some of us are going through there are struggles spiritual wicked forces that I want to destroy our families if God was to open us and see in the spiritual realm what is happening na kama shetani angeuliza ungekuwa hai leo na hiyo jamii ingeweza kusimama na ungekuwa hata kanisani leo lakini kwa sababu Mungu ni mwema Mungu ni wa ajabu Mungu anajua mambo yote Mungu anasikia maombi and he said we pray to God we pray to God and posted a guard haleluya na hii kukuwa ti baada ya kujaribu uh, the first resort ni maombi aliomba and then the other one he said perseverance the, 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 the opposition was intense unajua unaambia mara 10 wanakuja kukuua eh wanakuja wamepanga jama you know they have tried to send threatening messages and that they have plotted to come and kill you but his persevere opposition we people are getting weary you need perseverance a spirit of perseverance and in second corinthians says we are pressed from every side but we do not lose hope hallelujah we don't give up even when we are pressed from every side we keep on going we keep on singing bwana yesu asifiwe sana never give up persevere they kept on working ikafika pahali ambapo one one arm wana weapons na ile ile mkono mwingine wanafanya kazi na ukisoma hata basi ya mwisho na hema chapter 4 verse 23 nasema neither i nor my brothers or my men nor my guards with me took off their clothes each had his weapon when he went out even for water that's how we should be diligent and speaking about perseverance na kuna sense of diligence we cannot afford to lose our family the stakes are so high 
in America they say in every two cases one half of it in the end up in divorce na tunaombea jamii zetu bwana siwe sana tunaombea jamii zetu zisimame tunaombea jamii zetu zisimame tunaombea kanisa yetu isimame tunaombea vijana wetu get connected to the right people in their lives bwana yesu asifiwe sana we must fight for our families and then finally they kept the focus on god keep your focus on god in hebrews chapter 12 as i finish hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 say <clears throat> therefore we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off every weight that hinders and sin that so easily entangles us and let us with run with the perseverance the race marked out for us let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him and the cross scorning its shame and sat at the right hand of the father keep your eyes on the author and the finisher of our faith they raise up their eyes on god and god has given you a mission he knew his mission no matter the opposition he kept his focus keeping our eyes on jesus keeping our eyes on the finishing line hallelujah and we are going to finish well that what i believe with all my heart and let me say this no situation is hopeless when our eyes is on god no situation is hopeless no situation is helpless as we put our eyes on god focus on god not on the problem i like what nehemiah did he did not focus on what they say in chapter 6 ana anaambia na san balat come now we negotiate ana sema i think four times or three times he sent emissary kuja tuonge na akamwambia i cannot come down i am doing a great work for god and we are not coming down we are not going down we are not focusing down we are focusing on the work that god has given us hallelujah we are raising a great family we are raising a great life in our lives we cannot come down we are carrying on a great project our families are a great project now our watoto watakuwa outlive those are your your family is your mission in life there is no country without a family there is no church without a family na ndio shetani anataka kupigana sana na jamii but we are not giving up we are not cowering down hallelujah we will do our very best so that when we do look back we say that we have no regrets we give them our very best we were our model we prayed for them and we loved them keeping our eyes on Jesus do not quit focus on your goal and those of us who are battling even some of us are battling sin and discouragement may god raise you may god watch over your life no situation i'm saying that is helpless hopeless when god is present and you are not going allowed to be swayed by discouragement and we will make it hallelujah i say we will make it because we are focused on him and when i see him we focus on him saying you will make it hallelujah there are battles that god will fight for us that we don't need to fight for ourselves na mwambie hii mungu mimi nimewezo tegemeo langu ni wewe hallelujah and we need each other and as i said as i finish when you are fighting you will either be subdued you know you have two options either to subdue the enemy and destroy him or he will subdue you and destroy your life na sisi si wale wa kushindwa sisi ni wale wa kushinda 
Amen. Na jamii zetu zitasimama. Na nyinyi mtasimama imara. Haleluya. Si kwa uwezo wetu na kwa nguvu zetu, ni kwa sababu Mungu anaweza. Na ujue kwamba usiishi kama hauna adui. Are we together? Fighting shot. Don't, don't leave us if you don't have an enemy. You must be on guard throughout. Na wengine wako intano. Hao ndio wabaya. Unajua Paul anapiga pale anasema we have false brothers and sisters among us. Lakini wako kwa hii church, hii church yetu iko sawa. Hao ndio wanaweza kuleta chini sana. Najua opposition ya nje ni rais lakini ya ndani. Bwana mm. sana. You will make it. I say you will make it. Young men you will make it. In your struggle, inasema kwamba you have not a struggle pale ambapo mna shed blood hapana. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher or of our faith. Ningetaka tuweze kusimama and don't drop your guard. Put on your guard. Amen. Ah nitashinda. Na nina adui bwana. Bibi anasema kwamba anatembea usiku na mchana like a loading seeking whom to devour. But as he come, you'll find a hedge of protection. A hedge of protection upon our lives. A hedge of protection upon our families. I say, may he find a hedge of protection. Cover them by your prayers. Cover them by the blood of Jesus. I say, cover them by the blood of Jesus. Nasita kubali. Kuwa provoke. Na anga. I'm not giving the devil a foothold. Na shetani huna nafasi kwa nyumba yangu. Nasema shetani huna nafasi kwa maisha yangu, kwa mawazo yangu. Don't rent him a place in your life. Ah ah, mwambie no place. Unajua una rent na pay hata rent. Wewe una rent the devil na ana pay any rent, ame occupy tu na. Ah ah. Christ, let Christ reign. I say let Christ reign in your life. Don't allow discouragement. Don't allow evil thoughts. Close the gaps. Kama kuna gaps, uh, uh, closing the gaps. Kama kuna gaps, cover our, our, cover our brothers and sisters. Your husband and wife, cover them. Don't discuss your brothers and sisters. Are we together? They are part of you. Usi murarue, usi hari, ah ah, cover them. They are part of you. Don't destroy yourself. When you're destroying your brother and sister, you're destroying yourself. Tuwe watu wamboni wakutengani. Kuchukuliana miziko. Wanaswe sana. Na jamii zetu mungu watawale.